have any idea of what time it is, but I feel like we're moving on tonight. How many feel like we've got instruction tonight to help us to move on? I want to say some things tonight, see if I can connect with Brother Marlowe, and I want to say that I believe we are living in an exciting time. And I believe God is uh, certainly doing things. He and I were witnessing to some people today, and we're doing not only talking about what God was doing with those coming from afar and near, but, you know, God's bringing ministers into this church. We have pastors that the Lord's been bringing in. There's one over here tonight, uh, Brother Bush, and what a blessing he's been. God is certainly reaching out right now. How many can sense there's something he's wanting to do? Yes. 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 And uh, yes. I, I, I think that as we get closer to what was built in the early church, and I won't be laborious, but I want to say some things about faith tonight. Everybody say faith. 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 I think there's uh, uh, there's uh, been a mis uh, a misnomer, if I could say it, in religion, in dealing with faith. Uh, sometimes we've we've been we've looked at faith. There's a lot being said about it. In fact, there was a a whole movement when I pastored in the 80s. They called it uh, the faith movement and the word movement. And these were energized people. These weren't people that. <laughs> just had something light, but they caught a hold of, uh, uh, of something that was precious, uh, precious in the New Testament, and that was just people that believed God. And they didn't, they didn't rationalize it. They didn't put it under a mis microscope. But they just simply believed that if Jesus said, all things are possible, then all things are possible. Yes. But you can get too much education and you just somehow, you don't, you don't see that. But I believe that all things are possible Amen. to them that believe. Amen. I say I believe all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. And I think we've made faith a gimmick and uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a crystal ball. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a rabbit's foot. Maybe it's an Aladdin lamp. Uh, what, what, you know, in... And we fail to see that there are laws, and I'll put it this way. Now, I won't dig too deep into it tonight, but I can tell you that our pastor is right on the beam tonight. Yeah. He's right on the beam tonight because there is a deficiency. There's a malady in what I see in religion and what I see in the church in general. Not so much this church, but <laughs> there is a weakness and that is that people fail to realize that God is still God. If he was God yesterday, he's God today. If he moved 2,000 years ago, why can't he determine my path tonight? If he directed Abraham and he had a covenant, why can he not direct me? If he was the God of Jacob and the God of Isaac, then why can't he be the God of this church tonight and I, I I think sometimes if we could if we could go back if I, if you're going to build a house uh, you got and I have to be careful that we don't dig too deep like I said I don't even know what time it is but I want to take you to Matthew chapter 21 and I want to just look at a couple of verses but I want to say some things about this word faith I was surprised uh, to know that that this uh, word faith needs so much work and, and uh, we don't have enough time tonight. But it's, it's not a religious word. It's not a light little superficial word. Everything in the kingdom of God is accessed by faith. Let me say it again. Everything in the kingdom of God is accessed, uh, is made possible to you through faith. And if you don't believe the word of God, and if you don't, if you don't have faith, then you can't access it. How many were here Sunday night? Yes. Sunday night, our pastor read the entire book or chapter uh, um, uh, of uh, Hebrews 11. And I thought, well, why is he reading that to prove that he can read? No, but he absolutely sparked something in my life because every person that was successful in this Bible, they did things by faith. It wasn't something that brief, briefly moved upon them. The Bible said Noah built an ark by faith. 
in other words, what was motivating him, what was the trigger, what was, what was really moving this man was a force that was greater than himself. I was surprised to know, after all the years I've studied the scriptures, and I don't know why I didn't, um, uh, I didn't see it, but you notice in, uh, in Romans 3, and you could just write this down, and I think it's uh, 25, 26, 27, verse 28 through there, there's a word there that uh, says the law of faith. That means that if law, if, if there is a law, then this law is something that you cannot necessarily see or touch or, or feel or something tangible, but there is a principle there is a force that's greater than you and I tonight that's absolutely come from the heart of God toward his creation, Amen. and it's a law. I, I, was, um, I was looking at that, and you know, some of you know me, know the way I think. Uh, some don't think like I do. I'm sorry if I offend you uh, by the way I think. We all can't be the same, can we? Some of us have to think a little differently, don't we? But we must all live by faith. We must all have the ingredient of faith. We must all take God at his word tonight. How many believe that Jesus said, I'll never leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. He said, I'll go with you even to the end of the world. You can take that to the bank. He said he would always be with us. And I accept that tonight by faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. That means that there's some things available in God that belong to me. And I was surprised. You know that if you can, if you make it to the top of the Empire State Building uh, tonight, it'll be gravity. There, there is a force. It is, it is immutable. You can't see it. It's called the force of gravity, and it holds you on the top of the Empire State Building. However, if you jump off there, that same force will take you to your death. Um, there and there are other forces in the universe not seen by man, but just as real as the visible world. That's where we get mixed up. Just above your head tonight, there, there is a power, there is a force, there is a universe, there's a host, there's angels, there's unseen powers tonight that hold this thing all together. Why, you can believe it or not, the Bible said God upholds it all. By the word of his power. Amen. By the word of his power. And um, in 1903, just I just wet your I just kind of wet your appetite. In 1903, there's a couple of North Carolina boys. They one was Wilbur and the other one was um, um, horrible. And uh, they they had tapped into something that that uh, nobody knew about. They had built this biplane. This biplane was a machine, they, and they had discovered that there was a force called thermodynamics, or no, 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 aerodynamics, not thermodynamics, that's another unseen force. But um, this aerodynamics, uh, why didn't they have that in, in uh, 1875? How come, how come George Washington didn't get it? How come somebody else didn't get it? Because they were they were not they didn't believe back then that it was that was even possible. There were people that believed until the early 1900s that the world was flat. Uh, they and uh, my grandmother never did believe that anybody uh, went to the moon, but they went to the moon just the same. Man broke that barrier just the same. They, and whether I believe in uh, in the force or not. All I got to do is go out to the airport tonight and you'll see that a plane will take off and he's defying gravity and he is going, working on a principle that, that it, in 1903 they developed and they saw that there was a law of lift. I'm telling you tonight, the church must get a hold of some things that are just as real as in the physical world, yeah. in, the un, in, in the unseen world, and we must get a hold of it tonight. Your answer tonight 
and I'm inspired. I got a little passion yes, yes. burning in me tonight. Yes, yes. I got a little something, uh, uh, I call it spizzerinctum. Yes, I got yes, some yes, spizzerinctum yes, yes. working yes, in me tonight. Yes, yes. I'll tell you something tonight. Yes. There is a power available to us tonight yes. if we can access it. Power. Everything you need tonight. Yes. Everything that you have need of tonight, every physical need you have tonight is available through Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen here tonight? Let's put our hands up and say, I believe it tonight. I believe your word tonight. And whether I believe it or not, the Bible said faith is a force. I believe that we must live by faith. We must stand by, we need to bring it back. We, yes. we, we've been talking about, uh, we've been talking about uh, moving back toward things. And I tried here tonight, I'm, I'm trying not to make too many notes, not to preach from an outline, not to study and just give you a sermonette tonight. I want to have something so birthed in my spirit. I want to have something so alive and, and so generated in there. Uh, that when we do stand up to talk, that God would would quicken that and the Holy Spirit would begin to move upon us. And it wouldn't be just words, but it would be the very life of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I said the Bible said man shall not live by bread alone. How many know you won't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Hallelujah. I made a statement not long ago. I, I, I no longer study this Bible. I want to clarify it. I made it before. But I found something in my personal study. And I, I do agree with our pastor. I haven't played with this Bible. I've said I don't know what I, what I think. And I can boast. And uh, I believe one of the finest ministers that ever preached the gospel is a man that God has blessed uh, to put over this congregation. Whether you believe that or not, it matters not to me. Uh, whether you believe it or not. But I, I found it to be true. But I also found uh, that there is, there is something in him that I so desperately need. And that is that faith in him. That when I was wrestling with and when we were wrestling with what to do with these people uh, coming in only to try to help only to try uh, to see what we would do. He was calm. He said, don't worry about it. Been there before. Got the t-shirt. Know exactly what to do. I trust God for all of those things. Amen. 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 I, we must trust God for all of those things. Well, I don't see it in the pantry. Trust God for all of that. I don't have the answer. He said, when you're yet calling upon me, he said, I'll send the answer. Hallelujah. He said his work will not go forth void, but it will accomplish that. We're in a Senate, and it shall bring to pass that which I uh, have uh, promised that it would bring about. He said he declared the end from the beginning. And from ancient times of things that are not that done, saying I'll do all of my pleasure, and my counsel shall stand. I believe he's God tonight, and he always will be God. And it's built by faith. Let, let me show you something here. Uh, in um, in uh, Matthew chapter 21. I want to show you this. And I want to add to it. And Brother Marlow, when it's time for me to... Uh, when it's, I don't know what time it is. Just say all right now. And I know exactly what that means. And uh, just, um, just look at this now. There, there, I want to just... Uh, there's so much on this uh, study... And like I said, there, there we. I don't think we understand it. I mean, not, not that we're, uh, you know, that we're not where we need to be. But I believe that there's a deeper understanding that God is wanting to take. You ever felt like that that God was trying to show you something, but you wasn't quite sure where He was leading you, and you didn't know where He was leading you, but you knew it was right, and He put something inside of you. That's the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's that wonderful gift that you don't learn the Bible from a college or from somebody's education. He put a gift in you. He put a light in you. He put a determination in you. He put a radar system in you that will absolutely detect the will of God. This 
is the way. Walk you therein. Hallelujah. And you'll go where God wants you to go. How many believe he'll lead you and guide you right now? Right now, every day, everywhere you go, he's leading you right now. We must preach the Bible that way. Amen. I don't have all of the answers. I'm, I'm, no, uh, I'm no brain up here. I'll tell you what I have learned. I have learned and I've asked questions. And I've asked the right questions. But for every question I have about God and about His Word tonight, the Holy Spirit has revealed more to me than I could ever learn out of a book. The Holy Spirit will lead the church right where it needs to be. The church will not be left without leadership. The church will not be left without the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm preaching under the power and the anointing of God here tonight. The church will be guided by these two wings right here. I, I, uh, I no longer study the Bible, but I tell you what I do. I study the God of this Bible. Hallelujah. I'm after the God of this Bible. I'm after the way he thinks. I'm after how he feels. I'm after to and and if God make it if if God made a covenant with people, what was that covenant based upon? What are the terms of that covenant? I see the young people coming back in now. But uh, if God made a covenant with the patriarchs, why can he might not make a covenant, Brother Brian, with me tonight? If God could talk and lead a man out of the land of the child deed. If that man was steeped in idolatry, if his family uh, was in idolatry, and if they were lost uh, in an idol world, and God reached into a, a, a world uh, uh, of sin uh, and uh, all cut uh, shapes of, uh, of wickedness upon the earth and call out a man called Abraham, can he reach into America with its cesspool, with its sins, with its, with its problems, uh, with the abortion issues, and with the problems, can he still reach in and bring the covenant people out of all of that? Is God able to bring us out of the world and put us where we need to be? Yeah. The answer is a resounding yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. He's able to do that. He's able. Yes. He's able. And he'll do it based upon your faith. Yes. For without faith, it is impossible. I want you to say that with me. Say it loud. Without faith. Without faith. It is impossible. It is impossible. To please God. To please God. Now, how are you going to do it then? Can't do it. If God doesn't show us how to do it, how are we going to do it? It says it's impossible to do it, then how are we going to do it without it? Now, there's two little words here. And if you can think this is, oh, this is so elementary. See, I had this, Brother Rhodes. Uh, I had this 20 years ago. Well, thank you. I'm just glad to catch up with you. God bless you. I'm so happy I finally caught up with you. Yes. Yes. But I got a hold of something the other day, and I want to read it. Look at this, uh, and I'll, I'll read it. I'll try to read it. I'll get my glasses down on it. Oh, I want to say this. Sister Durrett gave me a, she sparked my faith, but I talked to her tonight. She said she went to the doctor, and she got new glasses, and I'm giving her testimony. She can tell it again, but she said, you know what? She said, this was my bad eye. But she said, when I got these glasses and the doctor operated on my eye, I could see that whole bottom little line, uh, fine little bottom line back there. And we that's been to the doctor and been to the eye doctor over and over again, you know you cannot see that bottom line. She read half of the bottom line. Amen. Amen. She read half of the bottom line. Well, she memorized it. No, she didn't memorize it. No, she didn't memorize it because they got where they hide it now. And they cover it up, and they spin it, and then they turn it around. You can't memorize it. Believe me, I've tried it. <laughs> you can't memorize it. They'll catch you. But look at what Jesus said here now, and I'll leave this one part. There is so much on it that I don't have time to get in all of it, but I want to read this. Look at verse 17. And I don't have time to qualify it tonight. And uh, some will be grateful. But look, in verse 17, he left them. Now, I want you to read later, not now, find out who he left. Why did he leave the scribes? Why did he leave these other people? Even when they had good things to say about him, the Bible said he left them. And when he left them, he went into the city of Bethany and lodged there. 
And now when the morning uh, uh, was come, uh, he returned to the city, and afterward the Bible said that he hungered. I'm picking this out now. If I, I miss a word, I'm sorry. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it. And he found nothing thereon but leaves only. And, and, um, and then uh, said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away, and when the disciples saw it, and this is where I want you to stop, and I'll get right in here in the next two verses. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled. You know, we should never marvel at what Jesus did. We should never sit in a church with our mouth open. Well, wow, did you see what happened? Hey, we, he's in the midst. He's here. Anything can happen when you walk with Jesus. Anything can happen. Let me say it again. Anything can happen when you walk with Jesus. He said, and, and of course they lied, and, and sometimes we lie. I, I, I can't get wound out. God help me. Uh, he said, have you understood all of these things? They stood up and said, yeah, Lord. I, yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, they didn't. Because when they put him on the cross, they fled. So they didn't fully understand, did they? But we're living in a day when God's going to bring understanding to his people. I told Brother DJ sitting back there, are you tired of the world? Are you, are you ready to get in here with both feet? And I saw that young man. Put your hand up back there. God's giving him another chance. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's come on. I told him the other day. I said, you know what turned out to be my favorite scripture in, in, in uh, 2014? A very favorite scripture. Out of all the scriptures we know, there I've, I found one this year that's my favorite scripture. And you'll be surprised where it is. And you know where it is? It's in the book of Jonah. And it says, And the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Let me say it again. And the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. How many glad he had three times and four times and five times? And let's put our hands up and thank you for all the times. For all the times we missed it. For all the places we should be. But we're right here. Hallelujah. My favorite verse is here. And the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Oh, God, come to me again. Hallelujah. Come again and again. What a powerful verse. Now look at this. Now i got to get out of here. I want the part where he said, have faith. What verse? 20. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon the fig tree withered away. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done unto the fig tree, but also, if you, but 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 ye shall see unto the mountain, be thy removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Now let me say this: that word "have faith" right there. I got to looking at that. And it's very very simple. It's very simple if you get it the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me. You ever you ever got up early in the morning, and had a cup of coffee? And you walked in, maybe you made you maybe made your coffee, and maybe you walked in, you said, here, have a cup. You said, maybe have a cup. He said, have faith. It's there, it's poured, it's available. All you've got to do is reach your hand out tonight. All you've got to do tonight, you can say that's elementary, but if you get a hold of that tonight, I'm telling you that everything available to you in God tonight is if you reach out for it. If you reach out for it, if you just reach out for it, if you'll just receive what God has tonight, if you'll embrace God's power tonight, if you'll just everybody here, just the next few minutes, just embrace what he has, he has something for you. Have faith. Amen. 
God bless all.